James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, we look at one of the fundamental problems our nation now faces. Well, I think what's behind it is this progressive impulse to redefine everything in America in a negative way. In America today, everything is up for grabs, from our providential history to the difference between male and female. Who stole the truth? We investigate the strategy to undermine truth in America on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus Christ stood before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, he told Pilate that he came into the world to bear witness to the truth. The oblivious Pilate responded, what is truth? even though truth incarnate stood before him. Well, there's nothing new under the sun, according to the scriptures. And today we find in our own culture, the very notion of truth itself under attack. On today's program, we will look at the secular left's assault on truth, which they are using to fundamentally remake America from rewriting our history to capturing our educational system, the cultural heirs of Karl Marx are brainwashing an entire generation to forfeit liberty and to live under a regime of oppressive political correctness. Our own John Rabe brings us this report. <laughs> What we see happening on the college and university campuses and now uh, the high schools, public and private, some of the Christian academies, uh, is a cultural uh, Marxism under the guise of critical race or critical uh, feminist theory. For the first time in almost 250 years, America is in the midst of a revolution. While there have been outbursts of violence, it has been a mostly ideological attack on the nature of truth itself, fostered in our educational system. There's an effort to destroy everything that was great about Western civilization. They're rewriting the history of the nation, and the end goal is to destroy America and its institutions, particularly the family. At the root of cultural Marxism is Karl Marx's absolute division between oppressors and the oppressed. You think about universities, they used to strive to be uh, places where you got a, a marketplace of ideas, that you had a diversity of ideas. That's not what they are now. They have become indoctrination centers. This has been seen on campus after campus, where instead of open pursuit of truth, radical students now declare ideas and speech they disagree with to be violence and thus worthy of repression. I did not realize that there were arguments against freedom of speech. And I began to study this and discovered that it goes back to Herbert Marcuse, uh, who was a Marxist in the 60s, who says that Marxism will never advance as long as the oppressors, the capitalists, have free speech. So they should not be allowed to speak and uh, they must be silent and give the other side a chance. Cultural Marxism has spawned the popular theory called intersectionality that is driving everything from the recent street riots to the tearing down of statues, to the push for open borders, to the transgender movement. It comes from Marxist critical theory and is applied to race, sex, gender, nationality, and a host of other categories. 
We uh, are trained Marxists. We are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. There's one group of people that they were, they are the oppressors, no matter what, no matter what they may have done with their lives, no matter what type of, of life they've lived, no matter what, you are categorically an oppressor and have a second group of people that are categorically, irrepressibly, irrepressibly, and inescapably oppressed. And the main thing that you use to advocate this is skin color. Critical theory also drives the recent frenzy to indiscriminately tear down statues and monuments. Well, I think what's behind it is this progressive impulse to redefine everything in America in a negative way. So, you know, not just Confederates, which of course we hear a lot about that, tearing down Confederate statues, but also the Founding Fathers. They say, well, the Founding Fathers had various problems, and then various presidents had various problems. And every aspect of America is being redefined in a negative way. And so because of this, uh, the progressives and people like that are trying to say, well, since everything in our past was bad, we have to junk all that, get rid of, you know, the Constitution, get rid of American history, and move forward into this new utopia that they're planning with, you know, socialism and equality and so forth. This Marxist notion of intersectionality in which each person plots themselves along a graph of victimhood is why, for instance, a Christian baker who declines to participate in a same-sex wedding ceremony is attacked as an existential threat and prosecuted by the authorities. When I came to Christ when I was about 23 years old, I turned over all the rights to my life and everything that I do, the way I raise my family, the way I um, work. Um, as we open the business, the decisions that we made as far as which cakes we would create, which cakes we wouldn't, um, my marriage, my employees, everything, everything in my life, I want to reflect his living through me, his love for me and my love for him. I opened the bakery 25 years ago now. Um, so I could incorporate my love of art and my love of baking and use cakes as a canvas. Mm -hmm. But one afternoon back in June of 2012, two gentlemen came into the cake shop and I uh, sat down with them and we made our introductions. And one of them said, we're here to look at wedding cakes and the other one said, it's for our wedding. And so I knew that this was not a cake that I could create and so graciously tried to tell these two gentlemen that. So, I'm sorry guys, I don't do cakes for same-sex weddings. They were surprised and like, well, what do you mean? So, you know, I'll sell you birthday cakes, cookies, brownies, any other custom cakes. I just can't create that cake. At which point they both stood up, stormed out of my shop, flipping me off, swearing at me. When the, the Civil Rights Commission ruled in my case, they said that I had to start creating cakes for same-sex weddings if I make wedding cakes. And so we stopped making wedding cakes at that point, which was about 40% of our business, 40% of our income went away. I went from 10 employees at the time down to four, including myself. After a prolonged legal battle waged against him by the social justice warriors in Colorado's government, Jack Phillips' First Amendment freedoms were vindicated by a seven to two vote at the U.S. Supreme Court. The Bible says that, uh, John 15, that we need to abide in him. And that comes from spending time with him in his word and that he will be faithful and just. And uh, if we abide in him and he abides in us, then we'll bear much fruit and he will be there with us. The thing I would urge people to remember is that history is to a culture what the memory is to an individual. If one day I wake up and I've lost all my memory and I have amnesia and I don't know who I am, where I live, who, my, who these people are in my house, I'm very lost. My world is chaos. So it is if a culture doesn't know its history. It's lost its collective memory and as a result we'll be living in chaos. I think the degree to which we have forgotten our history or abandoned it is the degree to which we're living in chaos today. What is the strategy to dismantle America's constitutional order and remake America into a socialist utopia? And who exactly is determined to impose their liberty-crushing rule on our land? 
The new publication, The War on America by Dr. Frank Wright, is an insight-packed guide that reveals a clearly defined and long-running battle plan. This plan stands against the Word of God and, if unopposed, could dismantle the very fabric of American society. Contact us today to receive your copy of the booklet, The War on America, to discover what it will take to stand for truth and defend your freedom in this year of crisis. As you've just seen, there is a concerted strategy at work on the radical left to separate America from her true history, recasting America as the world's worst villain. By demonizing America, they can convince people to consign it to the garbage heap as something not worth even saving. But this is not a pursuit of truth. This is an effort by the followers of Karl Marx on the cultural left to strategically brainwash a nation, a strategy that has had all too much success as Dr. D. James Kennedy explains in this portion of his message, Who Stole the Truth? Someone has stolen the truth. And it is amazing that there is very little outcry at all. Indeed, it, if, it, if it had been our purse or our wallet, which was stolen, surely the cry would ring throughout the room, stop thief. And yet someone has stolen the truth. Even more tragic, perhaps, is the fact that most people do not even realize that it's gone. Nor do they know who took it, nor in fact, how this rather amazing feat was pulled off at all. Who stole the truth? Or perhaps you are one that had not noticed that it was gone. There are many parents who have begun to get some sort of inkling that something is amiss. Their children go off to high school or college, and they come back, and there's something different about them. When you try to carry on a conversation, something is different. There, there don't seem to be any values anymore, and, and absolutes are smiled at, and the realities of the spiritual world and of God are considered somehow to have become irrelevant to life. And I suppose that if any single person could uh, be credited with uh, this, it would be the influential John Dewey. And it was done by a very clever expedient, one that was so subtle and so clever that the average person never even knew it had happened to them. It was simply done by the redefinition of truth and fact. And to show you how successful they have been, let me ask you, what is a fact? Ultimately, all truth and all knowledge and all belief rests upon facts. So therefore, if we can change the meaning of fact, we can change the meaning of everything. And they have done precisely that. I would like to ask you, what is a fact? Can you define it? A fact, quote, a statement that can be verified is a fact." Unquote. If you believe that, you are a victim.
of brainwashing. That is not what a fact is at all. And yet I am sure that there are vast millions of people in our culture today who would swallow that like a sugar-coated pill and not realize that the whole superstructure of knowledge, truth, and reality hinges upon that. According to Dewey, truth is that which may be verified by scientific verification. It is that and nothing more and nothing else. If truth is only that which can be verified and only that which is based upon facts, and facts are only those things which can be verified by scientific investigation, and nothing else is true, then what about God? God is a spirit, eternal and unchangeable. He is not matter to be placed on a slide under a microscope or boiled in a test tube or beaker. He is not subject to the verification processes of science. Ergo, conclusion, God is not a fact. God is not true. God is not real. And God is irrelevant to life. And that is precisely the conclusion of secular humanism today. And that same thing holds true for eternal life, for the eternal salvation of man, of heaven and hell, Jesus Christ, and all of the other things that we hold true, including, including the moral absolutes. If there is no absolute truth, then there are no absolute morals, nor absolute values. Yet we know that far above man's poor, pitiful search for truth, there has been God's revelation of absolute truth. Truth is conformity with reality, and God is the greatest reality in the universe. Truth is harmony with facts, and the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest and best attested fact of history. The God who made us can make himself known to us, and by the power of his Holy Spirit, he can break through our darkness and ignorance, and he can cause us to know that these things are true. Ah, my friends, the day is far spent, the hour is late, the time has come that Americans need to wake up to what is being done to our children to the perversion of truth and facts and values and meaning and reality by which their minds are being warped from the very earliest ages. And this entire bucket of worms needs to be thrown out of the life of this country. They need to know the truth of Jesus Christ, which alone can set them free, free from the ignorance that says that truth is not true if the myopic can see it poorly or if the blind can't see it at all. Set them free from the bondage of their sins which keeps them from even seeking the truth. Set them free from the darkness of moral blindness through which so many are staggering today. And set them free from the fear and terror of death and the grave. Set them free to eternal life when they come to know Christ by faith who is the truth, and then the Spirit of God will make them know that this is eternal life, to know the true God and Jesus Christ whom he hath sent. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. May it be. Amen. It's perhaps not surprising that as America has given up God, we've also given up truth. Decades ago, the secular left began driving God out of our schools and institutions by any means possible. 
leftist Supreme Court justices assured us that it was a violation of our Constitution for a valedictorian to pray in a graduation speech. And now, the very idea of a Constitution itself, which after all comes from the hands of old, dead white men, is under attack. Nations patterned after the ideas of Karl Marx are known for their propaganda efforts. And we're now seeing those in America as those on the radical left rewrite our history, tear down our monuments, and jackhammer away at our liberties. So is there any hope? Well, there is. But it will require action on the part of Christians like you and me. And you'll discover this in the book, Seven Steps for a Nation in Crisis by Dr. D. James Kennedy and Dr. Jerry Newcomb. We'd like to send you this short but very impactful book as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. This book looks at God's promises to us in 2 Chronicles 7.14, promises to heal the nation of Israel, and draws application for us in America as our own foundations seem to be crumbling around us. In the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, deep Racial and political division, rampant immorality, and the wholesale flight from truth seem to make our situation appear hopeless. But it's not, because with God, all things are possible. So contact us right away to receive Seven Steps for a Nation in Crisis as our thanks for your generous donation. And if you are able to donate $50 or more, we will also include the four message DVD set, A Nation Worth Fighting For, which features some of Dr. D. James Kennedy's most important messages on America's Christian foundations and the need for maintaining them for the sake of the freedom of our children and grandchildren. That's the book, Seven Steps for a Nation in Crisis, plus the four message DVD set, A Nation Worth Fighting For, as our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more. And as you donate, you will be helping us to continue producing and airing these vital broadcasts as our nation enters into a time of decision in this election year. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339 or call toll free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. In the wake of the tragic and inexcusable death of George Floyd under the knee of a Minneapolis police officer, protests took place around the nation and several of them turned into violent riots. Any thoughtful, compassionate person should be concerned about these issues and what they mean. But you should also understand that the solution America is being presented with is really an alternative religion. In this new religion, racism is its version of original sin. Even the most liberal, well-intentioned white person has a, 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 a virus uh, in his or her brain. In this view, if you're white, you're guilty. You have a virus, and that's that. Nothing can be done. And this false religion has its penitential system for that sin. Repeated apologies, self-denunciations, and even physical prostration Though like all false religions, the atonement is never sufficient or complete. 
Witness the case of NFL quarterback Drew Brees, who gave millions of his own dollars to help those victimized in Louisiana by Hurricane Katrina. His record of incredible generosity did not help him when he was asked about possible kneeling protests during the national anthem this coming season. He said, and I quote, I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag. After days of ritual denunciation as a racist, Breeze issued multiple apologies for the innocuous comment, as did his wife, who said, we are the problem. Yet, having been re-educated by the mob, that was still not enough. I don't accept his apology, says Malik Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles, among many others. Again, like all false religions, this one proposes false solutions. This is largely because we don't want to call sin what it really is, an affront to the character of God. Therefore, we don't want to accept Jesus as atonement and his life-changing, mind-changing love. And we remain stuck with so-called systemic issues for which there is no remedy short of revolution. And mind you, even that will simply replace old victims with new victims. No, unpopular though it may be to say today, even among some politically correct Christians, the real problem is sin. Sin before a holy and just God. And the answer is the atoning, sacrificial death of Christ and His resurrection. Only Jesus defeats the sins of pride, envy, anger, hatred, and racism. Only Jesus can change a heart. How about you? Have you accepted Christ in your own life? If not, you can do that right now, right where you sit. Call out to Jesus in faith, who alone can remove your sins and give you forgiveness and eternal life. If you do that, we have a book we want to send you at no cost or obligation to you. It's Dr. Kennedy's book for new believers to guide you in your relationship with Christ. It's called Beginning Again. Contact us to receive a copy today and may God bless you as you do. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. We began to hate together because you are who you associate with. How can we say indeed that all things are working together for good? That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.